Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Irene and I'm a registered dietitian and today I'm going to be answering your questions on how to become a dietitian. First and foremost, I just want to say that I am based in the US, so I'm going to be talking about how to become a dietitian in the United States. I unfortunately don't know anything about becoming a dietitian or being a dietitian in other countries, as that is not something that I have experienced before. And as some of you may know, this is actually the first year that a master's degree is required to sit for the RD exam. So that means that there have been some changes to the process of becoming a RD, and I know that that may be a little bit confusing for some, so I'll try my best to kind of address those things. But a couple of housekeeping things, I just want to go over a couple of terms that I'll be using a lot in this video. So first and foremost, ASCEND is the Accreditation Council for Education in Nutrition and Dietetics, and they are the accrediting council that kind of regulates the education programs for becoming a dietitian. Number two, didactic, in reference to like work or program, that just kind of refers to like the schooling slash academic part about becoming a dietitian, as opposed to number three, which is supervised practice, which I will also refer to sometimes as your dietetic internship. And I will use these terms interchangeably, but the dietetic internship is how many people get their supervised hours. So the new process to becoming an RD is to one, obtain your bachelor's degree, which is usually about four years, and then two, obtain your master's degree, which is usually about two years from a US accredited college or university. And one of these two degrees must be from an ASCEND accredited dietetic program either concurrently so like while you're doing your school work or after you finish your degrees you must complete a dietetic internship that includes at least a thousand hours of supervised practice and then once you've kind of completed all of this then you can sit for the RD exam and then when you pass it then you can call yourself a registered dietitian so all in all the schooling and your internship and all of that that usually takes at least six ish years because you're gonna need those two degrees and then plus your internship internship as well. So hopefully this little summary helps to give you a better idea of what that journey looks like from start to finish right now with the new master's degree program. I also did pull my Instagram and gathered a couple of questions from the internet that I feel like I see get asked a lot about how to become a dietitian and so I will answer those. So the first question is do you have to get a bachelor's and master's degree both in nutrition and dietetics? The answer is no. So only one of your degrees needs to meet the didactic requirements outlined by SEN. And sometimes the degree isn't even necessarily like in nutrition slash dietetics. I personally got a bachelor's of science and arts in nutrition and biochemistry. So I double majored. However, I did not go that like dietetics route when I was in college. So my degree did not actually meet the requirements to apply for an internship. So then I went on to get a master's in public health that was a coordinated program. So it included the dietetic internship. That program did meet the didactic requirements for ASCEND. And so my master's program was the one that kind of like actually met those requirements, even though my degree was in something slightly different. And I do have a degree in nutrition and biochemistry as well. So that can be a little bit confusing, but no, only one of your degrees needs to be in nutrition and dietetics, or it needs to meet that requirement. My personal opinion is that you should get one degree in nutrition slash dietetics and one degree in something different. I just feel like that opens a lot more doors for you. If I could go back in time and like redo everything, I feel like maybe I would have gotten my bachelor's degree in like, I don't know, computer science or something like that. So I had something to fall back onto, but that's kind of just me. I feel like I like to explore various different opportunities. And you know, if you go into dietetics after a couple of years, you decide it's not for you. You still have that second degree that you can kind of like pivot and do something else without having to go back to school again. So that's my personal opinion. Number two, I have an unrelated bachelor's degree and would like to become a dietitian. Congrats, you're halfway there. You have your bachelor's degree. It does not matter what it's in. Your master's degree has to meet the ASCEND requirements for your didactic work. That means that you are going to go onto the ASCEND website, which I have also linked in the description box, and you're going to find a master's program that meets the requirements. So whether you choose like just like purely didactic work, a coordinated program, or I think there's a third one now it's called
called graduate program in nutrition and dietetics. So you'll choose one of these types of programs. Make sure though, double check that they are ascend accredited and that if you did these programs that you would be eligible for the RD exam because there are some degrees out there just like I did in college. I can get a degree in nutrition, but that does not meet the requirement. The schoolwork needed to get like my verification statement to sit for the RD exam. Beware, that's why I highly encourage you to use the academy's like little search function for programs to figure out which one might be best fit for you. And you will complete that and that will meet your requirements for didactic work for Ascend. That way you'll just have to figure out what you wanna do with your dietetic internship, whether that's something that you complete with the school or you apply to diecast for after you graduate. That's kind of up to you. If you have a bachelor's degree in an unrelated field though, you do have to watch out for kind of the prereqs. Be looking at what program you want to go into and then look at each specific school and what their prerequisites are. In general, it's going to be like your biology, your chemistry, biochemistry, math, stats, I think, those types of classes, but each school is a little bit different in the specific big like courses that they require. Some of them require you to maybe take the GRE or some kind of like graduate school exam. Okay, number three, I have an unrelated master's degree and would like to become a dietitian. So if you have a master's degree already, that means that all you really have to do is complete all of the coursework outlined by Ascend and then complete your dietetic internship. There's a little blurb on the Academy's website on this and you can have your transcripts essentially evaluated by a dietetic program director to determine what other courses you need to complete before you're eligible to apply for an internship. The coursework does have to be completed at an Ascend accredited university and unfortunately that means that you can't complete this at like a community college or anything like that. So depending on your specific situation it may or may not make sense to get a degree in nutrition. Again really depends on what your degree was in like what classes you've taken. Another thing that I found out when like some of my like like co-workers and things were applying to PA school. There's like a limit on how much time has passed since you have taken a course that you can still use it for like credit, if that makes any sense. So like, for example, if I was 18 when I took biology and if I am 30 now, I'm not. But let's say if I was, if I was 30, that credit may not count anymore because it's been like more than 10 years. And so some schools have a little bit different guidelines for this. So some schools like, will accept it if it's been in the past like I don't know 10 years or it's seven years it's a little bit different if it's been too long though you may have to retake some of these classes still definitely reach out to like program directors where you would be interested in completing your coursework and like set up a time to like talk about it and then see what the best path would be for you it's very different for each individual person and I unfortunately I can't give very individualized advice and that is also not something that I've been through before so I'm not really the best person to ask. Okay, so number four, I would like to become a dietitian in the US, but I have degrees from a foreign country. So this is also something that I am not very familiar with. I grew up here, I did all of my schooling here. However, looking at the Academy's website on how to become a registered dietitian, which I've also linked in the description box, it appears that this needs to be evaluated on an individual basis. And they have a little blurb at the bottom of the page also about it that basically states that you must have your degrees validated by a U.S. accredited college or university and then once your degree is validated you may also need to take additional coursework to meet the didactic requirements and you will also need to complete an Ascend accredited dietetic internship before you are eligible for the RD exam. So basically this is kind of like the same thing as like if you have a master's degree in a different field. So reach out to like programs that you're interested in. Make sure that they are Ascend accredited though. I can cannot stress that enough because there are lots of programs out there, especially the online ones that are actually not Ascend accredited and will not give you a verification statement if you complete them. I would hate for someone to go through all this work and then not be able to meet the requirements. So number five, any tips for students studying to become a dietitian? I don't feel like I have any great tips. In college, I was not super great at studying. One thing that I used to always put a lot of emphasis on was note taking and then I realized I never absorbed anything from note taking. I feel like I would have done much better if I just like sat in class and then like listened and tried to absorb things instead of trying to write things down. Like nowadays I feel like most professors they 
put their PowerPoints up on whatever like canvas or whatever they use nowadays. And so you don't need to be writing any of that stuff down unless it's something that maybe they said that's not on the PowerPoint that you think is really important to remember. I wish I was more so in the moment and like just absorbing that information rather than so focused on making really pretty notes and all that stuff because that was not helpful at all. Next thing is I really pay attention in your biology and biochemistry classes. I feel like they like still come back to haunt me. Those pathways that you learn about, the sodium potassium pump, like I never thought that I would have to remember that again when I graduated, but lo and behold, we literally have kids that won't grow. And when I test their urine sodium, it's low. And then we supplement them with sodium and they start growing again. And my mind is just like blown. I'm just like, wow. So they just didn't have the sodium for that sodium potassium pump to make ATP. And so they couldn't grow. Who would have thought <laughs> that these things that we learn in biology that we think are kind of dumb are actually like so useful, especially in like clinical nutrition. It's all about these pathways. Like sure, like on your day to day, you're not using them, but if you have a very medically complex child and you're like trying to figure out what's wrong with them, those pathways are very, very helpful in kind of just like understanding how the body works and things like that. Never thought that I would have to use that. But the last tip I would have, I guess, is in college is kind of a good time to start building those customer service skills counseling and like talking with different patients and families and things like that that's a skill that is very much so learned and takes a lot of practice so i think that in college if you have the opportunity like it doesn't even need to be in a clinical setting or anything like that my first job was in the pharmacy and literally like dealing with customers all day you kind of just like learn how to de-escalate situations that kind of thing and then my second job was I worked at WIC and then that still wasn't quite counseling but it kind of had like a tiny aspect of counseling to it and so starting to build on that skill and obviously like I didn't start to get better at like counseling until like I started my first job honestly and even like going into peds it was a little bit different to having to learn that again and how you speak with families versus like you know older people but starting to build on those customer service skills and how to like de-escalate situations how to talk with different patients in different situations. I think that that was like super helpful, especially if you're an introvert like me. I think just getting very comfortable with talking with strangers. And the last question, how did you figure out which area to go into? I am someone that never knew what I wanted to do until I like experienced it. I've gone through like, I don't know how many careers that I thought that I wanted to do. And even in college, I changed my mind so many times. Like I went in as pre-pharmacy, changed to pre-med, and then somehow graduated and was like, I'm going to become a dietitian. I think that it's very important to experience different things and keep an open mind. I think that you can go in thinking that you want to do one thing, but then when you actually do it, you change your mind because you're like, this isn't actually what I thought it was. And that's totally okay. I think that your dietetic internship is a great time to explore some different options. If your school allows you to maybe like pick and choose what areas that you might be interested in, that would be a great time to just dip your toes into to some fields that you think that you're interested in. Just so you know, like even after you graduate, even after you get your first job, you can still always pivot at any time into any other field. I feel like I did that. I went into adult acute care and then I pivoted after a couple of months into pediatrics. So it's always okay to change your mind about things. I feel like for me though, I did know I generally like wanted to be in clinical nutrition. After I did my clinical rotation, I really liked like the clinical stuff that is what I like live and breathe because I just find it so interesting and I feel like when I was in that rotation I had an inkling just like a little inkling that I wanted to do pediatrics because of my experience in WIC and I didn't even know what pediatric nutrition looked like I just know that I like to work with children because of my experience with WIC even when I started in EADS it was like whoa like this is actually what we do like I had no idea all this stuff was beyond my imagination I didn't know that there were like literally hundreds of infant slash pediatric formulas out there. It really opened my eyes to a lot of things. It's, it's something that I never could have guessed if I never experienced it before and I never actually did. I never got the opportunity to do that like in my internship or anything like that. But luckily I like tried it and I loved it. So I think it's always worth it to just try different things and see what you like and what you don't like. And just know that there are always opportunities to get into different areas of dietetics. If you end up somewhere that you don't really like or you know 
after a couple years, you don't like where you are anymore. So that pretty much concludes some of the most frequently asked questions that I get on how to become a dietitian. I also have made a video about a year ago specifically on how to become a dietitian, kind of walking you step by step through the different education requirements and a dietetic internship and kind of my experience. And I also have tons of other dietetics content on my channel. Just look for the dietetics playlist. Lastly, of course, for some more guidance, you can always look to the Academy's website, which I have linked down below to kind of understand a little bit more about the different programs and which programs are Ascent accredited. But I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.